Welcome to the review of Bubble Bobble. The game was originally created as an arcade game by Tato in 1986. We're reviewing the DOS version, which was released in 1989 and developed by Nova Logic. It is an action platform game, and you play as these bubble dragons. You're forced to play two players in this game, so if you want to play one player, you can just simply let the dragon on the right, which is the blue dragon, die and play as the green dragon on the left. The game has a hundred different stages and the purpose is to rescue your girlfriends. You have to avoid monsters to prevent your death and you can normally attack them by shooting bubbles at them. In order to kill the monster you actually have to pop the bubble after shooting them. Otherwise, after a certain amount of time it'll time out and they'll come back to life. Once you beat one stage it immediately goes on to the next. You can tell which stage you're on by looking at the upper left hand corner of the screen. Here you can see we're on stage two. The game would be much easier if you do play as two players because it, the monsters fly around the screen quite rapidly especially as the stages progress. Luckily, the second player doesn't automatically come back to life and use a continue unless you hit a button. Now, when both characters die, you're eventually presented with a screen to continue. You start with nine different continues, which, let me tell you, you're going to be using all of them. This game is extremely difficult. The graphics are very pleasing to the eye, very colorful and childish. The music in the background is very repetitious. Luckily, you do have the ability to disable that while still leaving the sound effects enabled. The backgrounds and number of levels is astounding. You can traverse the levels by jumping up on platforms of the backgrounds. There's also a wide variety of items you can get in this game. Most of them give you points, such as bananas, or hamburgers, apples, I think that's an apple, and then you can find other special items, candy, donuts, ice cream, wait what? Fries? McDonald's fries? Oh, the M's upside down, I'm sorry, that's a W. You can even find beer. You can watch a mini dragon gulp down a beer. There's also other items such as red crystals and diamonds and you can find musical notes but some of the special items such as candy makes you shoot farther or faster depending on what kind you get. There's also a special item like this cross that allows you to shoot fireballs. That is awesome. There's also a different colored cross that kills all the enemies on the screen and turns them into diamonds. Sometimes you'll find an item that freezes all the enemies on the screen and allows you to actually just touch them to kill them. Items do eventually time out if you don't grab them in time, which can be quite frustrating. If you go to visit one of the wiki strategy pages, you'll notice how many items there are in this game. It's actually pretty amazing. And the funny thing is the food items, the more junk food oriented it is or the more gaudy the treasure is, the more points you get. So it's basically teaching you to be a glutton. You could play this game for days and not see anywhere near all the items listed in the Wikipedia page. In fact, I even found an item that wasn't listed in the Wikipedia. You can also start capturing these letters which at first you have no idea what it's actually spelling out but on the left side of the screen you can see them starting to form. Eventually you complete the word which is extend 
and it automatically teleports you to the next stage and you get an extra life. There's several different monsters in the game and they get harder as you move on. These ghosts can shoot fireballs at you and they move pretty quickly so you gotta be careful. There's these red demon fish looking things that move around real quick. They're one of the harder ones. There's some goofy peach looking creatures that fly around in a predictable pattern. They're actually easier and there are these things on springs that hop around. If there's holes in the bottom of the ground you can actually drop through them and come out the top of the stage. Monsters can do it too so you gotta be careful. You can also hop on top of bubbles that are floating in the air. Eventually if you wait too long you're presented with a message that says hurry up. The monsters speed up on the screen and then there's this white really ugly creature that comes after you. And you can't kill it. It tries to find the most direct path to reach you and as soon as it touches you you're dead. And it really locks in on you so sometimes you're in a spot on the stage where you can't move and it'll kill you. The only way to beat it is to kill the last enemy on the screen then it disappears. Sometimes the best way to kill enemies is to stand in one spot and do just rapid fire shots. Depends on the type of enemy though. Some stages it makes it quite easy like here on stage 28 they're all kind of in one spot and you can just nail them all in a row. You also have the ability to pop these bubbles that have water in them and the water will kill all the enemies that it makes contact with. You can also use it to gather items on the screen. If you pop the bubble from underneath it causes the water to go down but not you with the water and the water actually allows you to go down little crevices that you couldn't normally reach. Some bubbles have little flames in them and when you pop those bubbles the fire lands on the ground. Any enemy making contact with the fire is killed. Luckily it doesn't harm you. Another way you have to kill monsters is to use these lightning bubbles. And The way they work is once you pop the bubble a lightning bolt flies in the opposite direction you're facing on that position on the screen. The lightning bolt travels all the way across the screen so it can kill multiple enemies as long as they're in that position. Then when the monsters die they're turned into diamonds where you get a lot of points. Sometimes you can run into something such as this giant watermelon slice. I had no idea how I got that so I visited the wiki page and evidently I had collected three green e-bubbles. Sometimes when you kill enemies on the screen it turns the bubbles into various items you can grab. Some stages are very difficult because of where the walls are placed. Your bubbles actually pop when they hit the walls so you can't reach the monsters. So sometimes you have to use other tactics such as using water. The game is insanely hard. I kept playing and the farthest I could reach after hours and hours of playing was stage 32. I just could not get past these. I thought I almost had it and this last one got me because it speeds up. So once you do die you're presented with a high scoreboard and if you've earned enough points you get to enter your name. One final feature I want to mention about this game is you have the ability to remap the keyboard which is actually really nice as I was playing with the keyboard. So you can choose what keys operate for movement and for firing for both players. I think the game would have been much easier if I had a second player playing with me and since you share the same keyboard that's really nice for the ability to remap because they could operate on the left side of the keyboard while you operate on the right side. So overall how do I feel about this game? Well it was actually a lot of fun. It was extremely challenging but there was enough differences in the stages and the monsters and items that it made me want to keep playing.
I can only imagine this game made an incredible amount of money at the arcade. Tato was extremely wise with the way they designed this. They have the one creature come out and tells you to hurry up if you wait too long. That's a great way to keep the line moving when there's a bunch of people waiting to play the arcade game. The animations are very smooth. The playability is fantastic. You have great control over the creature. The graphics are really good. The sound effects are good. And the music will get stuck in your head. I kept humming this for a few hours after I played. But luckily you do have the ability to turn off the music. I highly recommend this game for those that love action series. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.